record on this computer. So you just uh, just go ahead and take us in into this, what you've got going. Uh, this is the elevator pitch I warned you about. I didn't know when it would happen, but it's happening right now. <laughs> so I think it'll be great. Tazlan takes it. So yeah. let the... Perfect. So, um, so, so what we're doing uh, here at uh, Conma is is we're basically trying to um, integrate a, a lot of these uh, technologies that seem new to people. And where I come in yeah, as a permaculture specialist is uh, me and Vinay had a conversation about uh, a social media platform and a social structure and, and how people would interact, right? And in permaculture, we have, uh, we have a part that deals with society and how society should interact and how society is built and, and how it used to happen and what's the best way we can take it forward, right? And with what permaculture is and what we can achieve with permaculture is, is all tangible things around us. And with what we speak of online in, in smart contracts and in, in blockchain, uh, this is technology that we, we need to understand, which is maybe not something tangible, but can definitely give us tangible results. So what I'm trying to do is trying to bridge the tangible and uh, what we see in our future and try and, and kind of form a, a nice I wouldn't use alternative state, but but something that we can look forward to in the future, right? This so, is like, this is exactly the vision that I had yesterday. Was I was very excited, and when I told me that uh, there there is uh, something called Cardano for climate, and and all of this is happening, it's like I want to be there in the next meeting. Well, this is it. It's the connecting. We're disconnected. We'll go through that in the presentation really quick. But I drew this little little diagram yesterday, and it's a circle, Cardano, making the world work better for all. That's the unreal stuff. That's the offline stuff, the virtual stuff. And, exactly. and then there's the real world, right? The people that actually get it done. We, we need both and figuring out those bridges. So, you know, the timing for you to be here is just absolutely phenomenal. I see that there's some laughing going on in the chats. So uh, uh, it's awesome. And maybe Felix is responsible for this. I don't know, but um, for bringing you guys and connecting us, it's just pretty awesome, you know, all around. <sighs> Felix is a connector, connecting people. Huh? <laughs> So, and now time-wise, does this work for you guys this time? Yeah. Because we also, we also are going to do a Cardano for Climate portion in our Pacific Town Hall that happens in 11 hours from now. So, you know, you'd be welcome to jump on board for that too. We'll put um, the information in the chat too. And um, we might just uh, double our participation, Nori, in the Pacific Town Hall, yay. <laughs> So, but uh, you know, if that works for you. So our routine is gonna be attend uh, C4C and then we have our Conma United session uh, from 10 till 11.30 and then we go to town hall where again, we are like bringing in the entire uh, experts to the enthusiasts from Conma to town halls. So you have a meeting, a regular weekly meeting for everybody coming up in what time? in an hour and a half yeah so right now it is 9 uh, 8 30 ist so it is at 10 10 o'clock ist 10 till 11 30. IST. where it's hosted on conma verse it's a 2d uh conma as in like a, a 2d metaverse so can you um you can put that in our cardano for climate telegram just uh yeah. and then we'll start connecting that and putting it adding it to the calendar uh yeah. that'd be awesome Awesome. So, Nori, are, you're hosting, right? I am. Am I? Well, I don't know. Do you want to? Um, I hosted <laughs> yesterday, so if someone else can take the weekly event, that would be amazing. Okay. Well, I can I can run it through. Um, I did s do the slides and stuff, so you know. Hopefully, uh, we'll jump right into it and. Uh, uh, be done by the top of the hour and then do breakout rooms for about half an hour or so. 
we'll see how this goes. I also did watch uh, Brene Brown yesterday, Call to Courage. And it has to do with being vulnerable and being brave in those things that you really don't want to be doing. And hosting this is one of those things I really don't want to be doing. So this morning I got up, made my tea, and it's like, be brave, Melanie. This is so important. You know, be courageous, have, be vulnerable, you know, know that you'll make mistakes and um, bring these beautiful people together. So I'm very excited to be here. Um, so let's see if I can get this right. I was trying to play with something and uh, uh, we'll just go with it. <clears throat> Full screen, seeing my, seeing my, um, See in my picture, right? Yep. So this is a picture off of uh, Littercoin Twitter account. Um, so glad to have Sean on board. Uh, he is perseverance in the flesh. I've been rejected so many times and he keeps at it, you know, because this is a challenge uh, that we have. And then we have Pike in Malawi uh, who goes out and collects um, litter, working on on his own with limited resources and we're trying to figure out how to send him ada send him you know the resources that he needs to be able to keep doing this stuff instead of you know the usual bank and credit cards and all this other stuff and the donation process all about that too so that's just a little story about what's happening and how we're trying to connect people and figure this stuff out so welcome to our Cardano for Climate Weekly meeting. Today, it's all about collaborations. We've got this extension now with uh, finalizing our proposals, and we have this great opportunity to sit back and figure out how we can maybe collaborate and combine things. Uh, in one more week time, we need to have the final proposal in. Um, I think somebody uh, co-hosts, if you don't mind, it, I'm getting a bit of feedback. Maybe there's somebody unmuted. Um, uh, anyways, uh, we've got this opportunity now to rethink our, any proposals that we've got out there, combine them and collaborate and work together on this. We're work, making the world work better for all people, animals and the living planet. That's our goal. So we've got the check-in. Um, we're gonna go through the cooperation. Sebastian's gonna share with us Little Fish Foundation presentation. Nadia's bringing in the role uh, and opportunity of community advisors. Simon's gonna take us uh, through ch our challenge proposals. Because what happened this time, I don't know if any of you know that we did submit, we've submitted Climate Change the Challenge to funds now. And uh, we got noticed this last fund, big time. You know, we got we got kind of zeroed out in or or really focused on to the point where we got the most down votes of any challenge. So that says something, and that told me after 30 seconds of disappointment is that we're in a competitive market, and we're competing for limited resources which is the problem. Scott Poynton says it, um, that climate change is a failure in cooperation. We're fighting over these limited resources. So Simon's gonna take us through um, the proposals that we're submitting. Um, Nori, we're gonna have a breakout room to work on those because these are important for us to get right so that the, you have a climate or impact related proposal we have a place a home for it because right now we're spread out over 22 different challenges 21 different challenges and i i can't sleep at night sometimes because of the disconnection so um so this is it fun date climate change the cooperation what we're given as a community is a picture that we don't know about and there's a lot of pieces all over the place. And if we're to, be, to become decentralized and community focused, who writes the rules? We are writing our own rules at this point. And right now, this is the current method. This is what's happening in Catalyst. We've got this puzzle and we're given, okay, you got X number of dollars to do this. You can do this, you can do this. And then what are the pictures that we come up with? 
we're missing pieces. And that's why this morning when I woke up, it was like, Kanma, they're one of the pieces in here that I don't know about. You know, we're disconnected all over the place. So I'm very excited, you know, that we're starting to see this come together. Somebody that's got these pieces, oh, that's how it fits in. And we don't have to, we don't have to draw these pictures in between. They're already there. And we may end up coming up with this great picture. Maybe it's going to be missing pieces. We don't know, but we're going to have a lot more pieces and a better picture of what we can do together as a community. So um, now what? And this is, you know, join us on Telegram. And this is something that came up with uh, Challenge Setting Challenge Team. Ubuntu is we are because you are. I am because you are. We are all connected. Let's see what we've got. So I'm going to hand it over to Sebastian. And uh, if you wouldn't mind going through and just let me know when I need to um, move the slides forward, okay? Are you able to unmute Sebastian? Be brave. I just threw you into the, to the, where are you? It's having some mic problems. So he yeah. just needs a second to get set up. Okay. Anybody want to share while we fill in maybe a little bit of gap there? Uh, just earlier, I was thinking of how similar a farm is to a smart contract. Hmm. Um, if, if you would look at a smart contract, it's, uh, it's, it's a bunch of rules that if you put something in, it processes through all of that and you get an output. Okay. So a well-designed farm, uh, uh, has the ecosystem as the rules where the ecosystem balances everything and your input is Hello? probably the seed, the water, uh, we're in. Perfect. Thank you. This is it. So, uh, Sebastian, are you ready to take over? Yes. Okay. And I'm getting a bit more feedback. I can't really actually see the participants. So, uh, okay, Sebastian, your turn. Okay, perfect. So, hello, everyone. My name is Sebastian Pereira. I'm here to introduce uh, the Little Fish Foundation uh, to the Cardano Climate for, Cardano for Climate Change Town Hall. So. Uh, many people around the world share some professional expertise, right? So that is the basic idea of how we want to construct little fish. Uh, next slide, please. But what if uh, we could create uh, all of these people that have different expertises? What if we could make them come together under a single space of the same idea so they can work together from anywhere in the world without having to meet personally or having to do something? Little Fish Foundation is trying to create this concept and this concept we call it a colony, where we can ask professionals and regular people to collaborate in a single space. Next slide, please. So a uh, little fish colony begins with an idea, right? The idea is the genesis of every of the colonies that will be introduced in the Little Fish Foundation. The idea will be divided into two stages. First, uh, ask for help. So. Every idea will be some sort of project and some sort of real life application of the Little Fish Foundation. Now, the generators of the idea, maybe when they are starting, are not going to have all of the necessary resources or expertise or personal in order to uh, make this idea possible. So uh, they will first ask for help to, to the Little Fish community, right? So, for example, if they are trying to raise funds or try to create an NFT collection, they will try to reach artists and take their artwork and transform it into NFT, NFTs. Or if they're launching a token in order to finance their operations, uh, they're going to require people buying those tokens. And obviously, they're going to require the technology to issue those tokens. Maybe they're going to require more team members. We don't know. I mean, the, the original idea could be something that can be only region specific, or it could be something that is going to be uh, around the world or many regions of the world. So from the little fish, uh, from the little fish uh, colony, what they can get is uh, stake pool operators. If they're going to run a stake pool, artists for the NFTs, activists to help them with the idea or help them with the logistics, 
other colonies. I mean, we want to create an ecosystem of different colonies that are going to be able to collaborate with each other. They don't have to be exclusive or competing with each other. And professional guilds. And professional guilds is like this second organization on the Little Fish Foundation of professionals that are there to uh, provide their services. It could be uh, guilds of accountants. They are there to provide finance or are they there to provide the necessary paperwork to try to subscribe the, the legal operations of, of a colony. It could be uh, it could be developers, right? Uh, a lot of these things are gonna require some sort of development work and that could be a professional guild. And finally, delegates are gonna be the people that um, if the, if the colony is launching a stake pool, delegators are those that are gonna be uh, delegating data to the stake pool in order to get rewards and in order to support the operations of the colony. So second, uh, what are uh, what are the, the, the boundaries or what are the, uh, the things that the colony is able to do? So first, the colony uh, is gonna be able to self-sustain uh, charging fees uh, uh, by, by providing a stake pool operation. And second, they're gonna be rewards that are provided to those that are staking. For example, they can get NFTs, they can get tokens from the colony, or they can get access to special products that can be released later. Next, next slide, please. Did I do two? Mm, I think so. Okay, let's see if I can bring it back. Hmm. Sorry, I'm on a little laptop. I'm just gonna see if I can get out of this. Hang on a second. Let's do this. Sorry, you guys. That one, oh, you know what? I think that was the next one. Um, it looks like that was the next slide. Okay, we'll go back to that. Right, uh, do you want me to share it from my computer? Uh, I've got it, but sorry, I, I just, uh, I'm trying to stay ahead of you and um, I thought that maybe I'd done a double, double click. Is that good? Okay, yeah. So now oh, the next question is, uh, how can you become a member of a colony and how can you support any of these ideas or common goals? Uh, next slide, please. So a colony is gonna be divided among uh, many different implementations. First, we have the idea of the individual colony, right? So uh, like I said in our previous slide, every colony begins from an idea and that's like the, the logical or like the smallest unit of, of organization in the Little Fish Foundation. Now, uh, a colony is going to bring uh, individuals and guilds together. So like we said, uh, guilds are collections of professionals that are able to support or give some sort of service to the colonies. And individuals are the, the people that are going to join the colony trying to, uh, to support or trying to grow the idea that originated. So uh, matchmaking is going to be uh, between the colonies and the guilds, depending on the services that the colony is going to require. For example, if the colony requires marketing in, to promote their idea or, or the project they're trying to, to develop. They're gonna need, for example, influencers, right? People that push the idea to, to their communities or, or to the people. Or second, copywriters. These are uh, uh, internet uh, people that are, um, uh, they are experts in, for example, search, search engine optimization or all of these abilities that you need to, to promote a message or to promote um, some sort of article. Next, we have business experts that can provide like uh, consulting or business structure, artists in order to uh, create NFTs, for example. Supporters are people that join, uh, uh, that are able to provide some sort of special service. The stakers are people that are gonna delegate to the, to the stake pool of the colony. Designers are people that uh, not only like design graphics or something like that, but they can design the front end of a website or something a little more advanced. And developers, in this sense, developers that, that are able to create a, not only Web2 apps, but also, for example, a smart contract developers. That's something that is very needed today, right? It's, it's very expensive or difficult to find a, a smart contract developers. And uh, the, the colony, uh, the Little Fish Foundation is going to support each colony by providing uh, each 
particular colony a personal dashboard, right? From the dashboard, the participants in the colony are, are gonna be able to see a personalized uh, NFT store that they can use to, to sell their NFTs, to promote their work. A delegation pool, so each colony has the, the ability to deploy a staking pool on Cardano. Uh, from the dashboard, they're gonna be able to control that pool. Assets, uh, whatever asset this, uh, this colony means, whether it be NFTs or regular tokens, they're gonna be able to manage them from the dashboard in, in, the, in the Little Fish Foundation platform. Uh, at whiteboard that is going to allow them to show like the roadmap or, or the work in progress as uh, social integration so if they have any uh, twitter account uh, discord telegram all of those things are going to be there in, in the dashboard for them to see and um, finally voting so if uh, for example this is sort of ngo that requires voting on different projects or different initiatives is something that they're, they're going to be able to deploy from the dashboard now legal uh obviously a lot of 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 the work or all of the things that these activists have to do, then they need to be registered in some sort of a jurisdiction, a legal jurisdiction, and that's something visible from the dashboard uh, to manage that. So uh, a single colony or, or colonies are going to be able to de deploy uh, several types of digital assets uh, in the, the blockchain industry, right? So for example, the, the first thing is going to be regular tokens, uh, tokens that can be used uh, for exchange, for promotion, or anything like that. Second, uh, a delegate to colony stake pool. Like we said, uh, a single colony has the, the ability to deploy uh, from the dashboard uh, a, dele a delegation pool on Cardano. Um, using that delegation pool, they can distribute or they can uh, keep assets to everyone who's delegating to that pool, whether it be tokens or, or NFTs. Second, they are gonna be able to uh, create um, NFTs. And that's like the primary method in order to promote some sort of colony. Sorry, the, the last portion there, uh, it is not visible, has been cut. Can, can everyone see uh, the last branch of the tree where it says treasury? Sorry, Sebastian, I just moved it ahead. Um, I'm gonna share the link to the, uh, the presentation though. So um, do you have it or should I go back? Uh, no, I have it, but uh, oh. I guess people cannot see. Uh, don't worry, I'll just describe what says there and, and we'll see from there. So uh, finally, in the, in the tree of assets, uh, uh, well, you, know, you cannot see it, but when you see the slides on your own, you, you'll be able to see that assets are going to be managed from a treasury. And that's going to have like uh, three main sources. First is going to be donations that the colony is going to receive by people from, from, from their backers or from the community. Uh, that's going to be managed by a treasury wallet that is going to be particular to that colony so that they can control their own private keys. And this, uh, this treasury wallet is also where all the sales from the NFTs that the colony is able to create or is able to deploy are going to go. So uh, what is the Little Fish Foundation? It's a decentralized, uh, unstoppable uh, site, right? So it's gonna be able to integrate with WordPress. It's gonna be transparent and traceable because using uh, the Cardano blockchain technology, all of the donations, all of the NFT sales, all of the activities the guilds and the colonies do are gonna be trackable using the blockchain. Uh, Colonies are, are going to have the option to be anonymous since everything is going to be trackable using the, the Cardano blockchain and there is no need or there is no, no, no pressure to reveal your identity as a person because uh, there is no way you can cheat the system. And the same is going to go for guilds and other or their supporters in, in, in the Little Fish Foundation because we know sometimes um, these activist activities uh, come with a lot of political pressure depending on, on where you are in the world. Uh, then now chip transactions with the shared UTXO. Well, UTXO is only a reference to the accounting model of the Cardano, uh, the Cardano blockchain. Uh, it is quite cheap. It is like um, many, 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 many times cheaper than other competitors, for example, Ethereum. Uh, to give you a, a really dramatic example, during uh, January of this year, the transaction volume on Cardano was $6.76 billion. On Ethereum was $6.5 billion, yet fees on Cardano was only $170,000, while fees on Ethereum was $34 million. So you can see that there is a dramatic reduction from using Cardano over its competitors. And the concept of, of the colonies, the guilds, and Little Fish Foundation is micro DAOs, right? So 
Those are decentralized autonomous organizations that using the, the little fish model are gonna be able to organize using our platform and they can be a small, large, medium size, whatever, right? It could be a few people, dozens of people or even thousands. And that's what we call a, mi a micro DAO. And finally, uh, the guilds and, and the colonies will be able to have uh, online support from the Little Fish Foundation, uh, uh, basically around the clock and any part of the world. Uh, next, next slide, please. So uh, uh, when you launch a stake pool, uh, you need uh, a little, uh, the, the minimum amount is 3,000 Naira to, to begin the uh, stake pool uh, you want to operate. Everyone who, every colony that launches a stake pool on the Little Fish Foundation platform is gonna receive fish tokens in return, proportional to, to the stake and to their operations. And those fish tokens are gonna be the governance tokens of, of the Little Fish Foundation. They'll be used for voting, they'll be used for uh, promotions and, and because it is a, a blockchain token, it's gonna have some sort of monetary value that, that can be used for trading. Uh, the, the fees that are gonna receive by, by these pools is gonna go to, to the colonies and they're gonna go to different activities or different uh, promotional things that we can provide in order to support the ecosystem and, and push it. Uh, next slide. Uh, so all of the uh, all of the things that we have presented so far can be reused. Uh, everything is going to be developed using open source uh, architecture and, and licenses. So anything can be again uh, reused by people of the community. Is is technology that can be redeployed? Like well, basically everything in the blockchain. Because once you deploy a smart contract, it is visible to anyone. Then uh, it, for this reason, it is called that can be reused, can be redeployed, and can be modified for for more complex or more or particular uh, use cases. So what are some of the uh, micro DAOs that are currently on, on the Little Fish um, platform? Friends, uh, Blue Peace, that uh, initiative for oceans. And uh, we have Cardano for climate change. Those are like our two starting micro DAOs and we will expand from here to, to other uh, similar uh, colonies trying to look for uh, trying to uh, provide some sort of service. So uh, what is our roadmap currently? Uh, yeah, well, in the, the next year, the next 12 months, we are gonna create the fair, first full, fully functional micro DAOs that are gonna help each other, are gonna be in use with each other. Uh, next, after, after that year of work, we're gonna deploy WordPress integration for the, uh, for the little, flash, uh, little fish uh, platform while uh, also allowing um, transfers using the UTXO model. And uh, next, we, we will deploy the, the stake pools where people are gonna receive the rewards and fish tokens. And we're gonna deploy the donations and we're gonna open submissions for NFTs. And after that, we're gonna open a colony and guild creation on the platform. And at the same time, allow uh, people to join either colonies or, or, or the guilds. Next slide. So if, uh, well, basically that's it. If you want to uh, be part, uh, you can use uh, the, the QR code there. That's gonna take you to our social media and become a little fish is the hashtag that we're currently using on Twitter in order to promote uh, this initiative and our platform. Thank you. Thank you, Sebastian. Um, Jem and his team have been working so hard in the background on little fish uh, another proposal that didn't get funding this year and um, really, really thankful for all the work that you continue to do. Uh, this, this full presentation is also linked in our Telegram chat uh, from the meeting on Monday and Little Fish has a regular general meeting every Monday. I uh, can't think of the time, someone else can jump in on that one. So thank you, Sebastian. Nadia, your turn. All right, hello everyone. Um, not, not nearly as vibrant and beautiful a slide, but one full of information here. Um, if we haven't met, I am this term's um, circle rep for the community advisor group. And uh, just in the um, 
days prior to the community advisor registration opening, just making some rounds and talking a little bit about this role, which isn't familiar to everyone and is a very important one in the catalyst oh. system. So um, here to talk about a little bit today and to be available for any questions that are um, that are upcoming. So uh, if you're not familiar with the community advisor role, the community advisors um, responsibility and contribution is to assess the proposals that are submitted and to use a criteria to determine the impact, feasibility, and um, auditability of the proposal. It is a help both to the proposer to help them really refine and um, hopefully uh, improve the proposal through this process that's happening now and also a service and a support to the voters who um, you know, couldn't possibly read in depth. Well, I guess potentially if uh, that's all that you did for a period of time, but it's, uh, it's a service to the voters to help the voters understand uh, how their proposal sits in terms of being able to accomplish the impact that the challenge that it's in is uh, creating. So really uh, a very fantastic role to take on if you're newer or even if you have been in the ecosystem for a while in Catalyst and you um, haven't gotten to do it yet because it's very flexible and um, it is one where you can make an impact and have a lot of individual benefit uh, as well as making a contribution to other groups. So um, I have here, it's a flexible way to contribute. So what will happen is that once proposals are submitted, uh, there will be a week upcoming here where the community advisors are able to, um, they're, we're preparing now, and then we'll register here. Uh, it should be opening tomorrow or the next day. And um, you'll be able to really understand what to do to serve the role. And there's some guidelines and there will be upcoming um, Catalyst School seminars to help you really get prepared. And uh, that will just tell you how to, how to look at and read the proposal and how to think about it and how to respond. So um, it also is a very fantastic way to just take a walk around the community. So you'll have a sense of what different projects are doing, what things are taking place. I know when I first started to do this, I learned about all kinds of different projects. It was very inspiring. It was very, it's a very uplifting process to be able to look at all these proposals and to give feedback on them. And uh, it is an incentivized position. So uh, I have the link here. Uh, this incentivized for assessments link is uh, a link to the explanation of how uh, those incentives are uh, given once the assessments are done. And uh, it, it maybe is good to mention that you could do this in a very small way. You could just do some of them. You could just do five or 10 assessments or some people actually do this professionally and are able to uh, spend this week really zoomed in on and, and creating these um, assessments over this time. So uh, I have a community advisor assessment guide here that is going to give you a real perspective of the scope. Uh, it's very accessible. It's very doable. So even if you don't feel like you have a tremendous amount of experience in certain areas, you can still find a place to um, be involved, a challenge that needs your help. And uh, the, there are four upcoming Catalyst School workshops. Two of these are how to become a community advisor, and they are coming up this weekend, early next week. So even if you can't make the time, they record them and they will go on the Catalyst School um, YouTube channel. So you'll be able to watch them afterwards. And I'll say I did that myself. And I found that between the guide and the Catalyst School uh, seminars, I was able to really feel like I knew how to get going. And then... Uh, right now, you can start to just peruse the proposals that are there, read them, start to give feedback. This is a great thing to do anyway. We should all be invested in doing this and in some way in, in our contribution to each other, but it's a great preparation for becoming a community advisor. So I have my, um, my information here. If you want to reach out to me directly, I'm happy to sort of kind of give you a direction that might be helpful. And uh, this is the email for the circle rep position. So you can email me there. And uh, that's, that's really it. I'm going to be available to answer questions. Um, if there, there's a lots of community, former community advisors and current community advisors on this, uh, on this uh, meeting today. So if I've missed anything, please uh, chime in and uh, point that out. But I think 
uh, a really a really nice way to both get involved and to be able to make a contribution here over these coming weeks and one that you don't want to miss because it won't come around again until the next fund to be able to do so uh, thanks for this time Melanie thanks everyone here for having me and I'm really glad to be able to talk with you today thanks Nadia just take a couple minutes for people to share about how important this um, how important this uh, community advisor role is for creating um, excellent proposals. Uh, at this point, when we make comments in idea scale, we're not we're not um, rewarded for them. There is something in the works that we can start rewarding those with some sort of a token to recognize that. But this is a paid position, and if you've never done it before, it is a good idea to figure it out, practice run. There's a difference in, in a good um, assessment and an excellent assessment, um, not only for the impact on the proposal, but see, the other thing is that typically these advisory uh, comments come after the proposal is finalized when there is no chance for changing your proposal. And then it's a little bit of a gap in this process at the moment, but we have this opportunity, I believe, to get paid for the assessments before finalization. Is that true? Nadia or Felix, unless Felix, you're in another call as well. <laughs> The opportunity to get paid for the investment for the assessments before they are finalized is that right or not or they don't get uh, you can't actually write an assessment until the proposals are finalized is that because we can sign up this week yes yeah, so you can sign up this week and the the goal of this so usually how it is is that the proposals are submitted and then the community advisor period starts with the extension of this deadline um, we are also making we're also sort of making the community advisor position open so that that can go on but i do think it's important to not just just check with and, and look at the proposals that you're looking at because uh, maybe two things to note are you cannot you cannot assess a proposal that is in the in a category where you are also proposing. So if some of your proposers, you just have to make sure that there's no conflict of interest there and no crossover. Um, I think that is also the case for for VCAs. Um, maybe one, of, maybe someone can chime in to, for me to help me with that. But um, for VCAs, the same rule. Yeah, same rule. And proposals. So, um, yeah, so once the assessments are done by the CAs, then what are called veteran community advisors will then are, are a second layer of assessing the assessments to make sure that the assessments are, are well done. So it does have a process coming here, but um, the once the proposals are finalized is really the period of time when the assessments officially start. Exactly. Only finalized proposals can be assessed, really to say the collaboration and ideation phase where the community comes and says, hey, look, you could maybe add this your, to your proposal or this point is not clear there you have, where we are right now you have the possibility to collaborate with the community but after March 17th all proposals are locked they can't be edited anymore and now the community advisors start to assess and rank the, the proposal right thanks for clearing that up Felix we have this opportunity to practice assessments we have an extra week to practice assessments and to also help um, other proposals in the same challenge setting as we might be in. Joram, you have something to say? Yeah, I think it, it's really helpful to do that uh, at least once a few times, also to be able to write better proposals in the next time, to be more involved in the community, to see what's going on. I mean, you learn so much by doing that. So it's really highly recommended to do it. and and try to do it good and i think you will you will learn a lot a lot of interesting stuff and you actually get paid for that you and you yeah so i do recommend it i think it's very important to make sure you get your proposals up before the deadline so that the community has an opportunity to give you feedback and to talk about it before the cas come in because like felix said 
proposals get finalized, they're locked, they can't be changed. So if you wait till the last minute to submit it, there's no opportunity for anybody to give feedback and for you to fix things um, or change things based on that feedback. So give it some time, even if it's a rough idea or a high level overview, put it up now so that people have time um, to provide some feedback and, and have a conversation. So this weekend, Catalyst School doing the workshops on being a CA. And then you've got a week to practice being a CA, giving feedback at the same time, helping each other create these great proposals. George, did you have something to pipe in? You're off mute. Okay, so um, anything else? Anything else that we can cover for the CA? And I apologize for anybody that's new here, that's never jumped into Catalysts. Like, what the heck are you talking about? Simon, you have something? Yeah, I was going to just re-emphasize, don't leave stuff as placeholder. There's so many um, proposals out there at the moment that just say placeholder, placeholder everywhere. I'm always looking for collaborations and I'm like, well, this might be something that's really important that I'll do a collaboration with, but at the moment it just says placeholder. So even just a title and a, a quick summary of the description is better than placeholder. You know, what's it a placeholder for? We're going into that in the breakout room on collaborating, mm -hmm. you know, so we'll have uh, connecting and uh, one minute pitches on your proposals and we'll try and figure out some of those connections. Felix. I think one thing to mention about the community advisors is it's one of the, I would say, most comfortable entry points to people to get directly in touch with cryptocurrency. You don't have to be a tech guy or whatnot, and you di directly can engage in the community and receive ADA for it. And not only some ADA, community advisors are highly rewarded now. If you make excellent, excellent assessments and you make 30, 40 of them, you count already on thousands of ADAs for your, for your engagement, right? So even for a new community as well, who don't have maybe such a big tech community, approaching community advisor principles to them might be an extremely effective step for you to get your communities included into blockchain ecosystems in general in regard to Catalyst. Thanks, Felix. That's a, an important point. Um, yeah, even through my process of doing a, a couple assessments and then more the next fund and then last fund I had some excellent ones and I got rewarded well for them and it feels good because you're helping uh, somebody maybe they don't get funded or they do this time but the next time they come around their proposal will be much better based on um, community input. So how are we doing? We got uh, another 13 minutes and then we're going to jump into breakout rooms. Uh, we'll go back to, uh, we, right now we have Simon and uh, Nori about our challenges, uh, Cardano for Climate Challenges. Simon, yes, or, so, go ahead, yep. Um, if, if you don't mind, Nori, I'm going to leave with that one, uh, I think. Yep. Um, if you go to this, to this slides real quick. Did you, did you put in more slides? Because maybe I didn't get them. There is just one slide for, for, for us. Oh, we, of course. I just, <laughs> I just put in uh, the three different proposals. So That's great, because you slides. just, you did that this morning, like yeah. right away. Awesome. Um, uh, and that reminds me, Nadia, if you wouldn't mind dropping those links in the chat and Simon the same, um, that'd be awesome. Yes, actually, I didn't find the Catalyst Sustainability Goals Challenge. So if someone could uh, change the link on that one or add it to the chat, I'm okay. going to send, send you the, the climate change one as well. Um, yes, so we've done it two times already and we've not been successful, unfortunately, in the last two funding rounds. Uh, I hope we improved on the proposal, but Apparently, that's not enough for the community, and uh, uh, I'm not going to stop there. Uh, I think, yeah, I think it's still an important, um, an important challenge. 
I hope the community, you know, realizes that with time. Uh, I mean, even um, even the critique was last time was mostly, you know, it's too early to have a climate change challenge. We should uh, we should focus more on the technical part. Um, well, let's see. Maybe this fund is is the fund we get we get voted in finally. And yeah, I think also for everyone here, it's really it would be really uh, important to get this challenge funded because a lot of people here have you know proposals that would fit perfectly into the challenge. Um, yeah, uh, but this time around we do have other challenges as well because oh well, if if maybe we we did make a mistake right maybe something in the proposal was just not uh, not good enough for the community or maybe you know. Maybe there is, we should just try different things, right? So we also have um, the sustainability, um, catalyst sustainability so, goals challenge. Simon, I'm going to let Nori take over here because I woke up this morning to what, 35 messages? Uh, you know, I live in a place where I'm eight hours behind everybody else, and Nori and Yoram were both up, Nori up very late uh, working on the other two proposals. Exactly. I just wanted yeah. But it was my plan anyway. Perfect. Hey, All right, thanks. Thanks, Simon. Um, yeah, as Simon mentioned, this time we're going to be introducing at least one other challenge. We were thinking about two. Um, they're tentatively right now called Catalyst Impact Accelerator as a challenge setting for Fund 9 and also the Catalyst Sustainable Development Goals. But as we were writing the first one, the Catalyst Impact Accelerator Challenge, um, the SDGs just kind of naturally fit in there as well as everything else. So we may just do the one. Um, and the Catalyst Impact Accelerator is really trying to expand what we're doing um, as an impact collective. And we're actually trying to drive towards convening um, an actual impact collective of all the different players in the space in Cardano that are trying to do different impact um, initiatives. So this is really a space for those things to have a natural home. And um, so this is something we're wanting to put in for um, this next fund for a fund nine challenge setting. And so we'll have a breakout room um, here. Just if you're interested in contributing or um, have thoughts about it and want to talk about it, um, please do come. We'll also be doing climate change, the challenge. Um, as the other one. So we're going to be doing both in parallel. And it's kind of an experimental fund. We're going to see, we're analyzing the voting and how things work. Um, like we were the highest downvoted challenge last time. Can we achieve that? But can we also get the highest vote count as well? Um, and then this other one is designed to be um, a little more um, I know the language is different here. So we're we're really focusing on business and um and impact stuff and different things so um it's a little more hard rather than um the climate change the challenge which is much more um soft and inclusive and welcoming um this one we're really trying to make it really sound business and and we'll see which one the voters like better it's kind of an experiment just um in that sense as well but also um yeah, just looking at all the highest downvoted challenge settings last time, it was the diversity initiatives, the the gender initiatives, the climate initiatives, all a lot of the impact driven stuff were heavily downvoted and we're trying to understand why. Um, so this is an experiment. So maybe this becomes more palatable to the whale wallets that downvoted us last time. Um, so that's basically what we're doing. So yeah, and then the other one, we're we're not going away. So climate change, the challenge is going to come back again and again and again until we can shift the consciousness of our community to say it's important. Because look at this room, there's what, 33 of us here now today. And that's amazing. Um, and we're all centered around this topic. So um, we're going to keep going. So please join us in the breakout room if that's something you're interested in and want to help out with. And then there's one more tiny little challenge setting coming along called Climate Change, the Cooperation. Very, very small budget working on something like seeds that turn into more. We know what uh, 
you know, growing tomatoes does. You plant one, to one seed and next season you've got thousands of seeds. And as farmers, uh, regenerative agriculture people, permaculturists, we know how to make do with what we have. So I'm, I'm also working on a proposal that'll be in a breakout room based on a very, very small uh, budget, working on a challenge setting model towards cooperation. And it begins right now. It is for Fund 9, but it's, it's a process of trying to cooperate and connect people first. And then whether or not this gets funded, Fund 9, uh, doesn't matter. We'll be prepared and ready with some amazing proposals for Fund 9 in 20 or 30 different challenges, whatever it may be. But uh, we've learned from two funds now that, uh, first of all, we're not going away. And second of all, it is good to have a plan B. And so we're, we're approaching this from different perspectives and definitely open for feedback. So we're coming up to breakout rooms pretty quick. And we have, um, we have um, an event coming up March 31st. It's a little ways away, but we're trying to get ahead of the game and work on this. Uh, it's on Plastic and Cardano. Meetup is here. We have an event planning on Monday, core team planning on Tuesdays. Anybody is welcome to these events. Um, our core team is very open. We do a lot and we can always use more contribution. And if you haven't watched this A Plastic Ocean on Netflix, please do. Um, it will change your life. life and um, it may even change the life of other people in your family that don't normally care about um, uh, plastics and, and what we're doing to our earth. So that's getting ready for it. Uh, breakout rooms are coming up. Uh, Simon and Nori, I believe, are gonna be hosting that. Are we separating into two? I can't remember. Nori, do you remember? We can keep it in one room. And Elias, I'm sorry, I did not give you time to speak about the education. Uh, and this is what happened last week. We did turn four rooms into two. So feel free to um, jump around. And it's it's actually Sebastian in the Little Fish Colonies and Guilds instead. Of no worries, uh, Melanie. I'm, uh, I'm still uh, working on the on the content. I shared this with the, in the Telegram group. And, yep. uh, and uh, yeah, yeah, maybe next time. Thanks. Elias has um, an amazing, um, and I, I think a host has to do the breakout rooms too, right? Just sorry, a little bit of admin. I can do them too. Uh, as a co-host or do you need to be host? Host and co-host can set up. Yeah. Okay, Simon, if you wouldn't mind setting up two, four, six rooms, and then we'll just sort of figure out where we're going. Um, Nori, did you need a separate room from Climate Change the Challenge? No, there's a lot of rooms already, so we can just combine those. And TiVo, um, I'm thinking you're here, and I'm sorry I haven't given you a chance to speak on that one either, uh, if you want to pipe in. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's mini proposal workshop as usual. We come together and share uh, uh, what we want to solve, and then we're going to build a proposal for that. I would need a co-host and then I heard Simon mentioning he has the speeches and I was wondering if he wants to capture these speeches on a micro board and then I go on to the mini proposal workshop to, to drill down on one of them. I like this. You know, this is what happens when you, uh, when you stay flexible and you don't really know what that puzzle is going to happen. So is it possible for one of the challenges to go into um, TiVo's mini workshop and we work on those together? Yeah, sure. Okay, awesome. Now I maybe just we should, um, Maybe we should all three get together, Nori, me and TiVo and- You guys decide. Room. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, and um, can someone else make T TiVo host? I think you need to raise, done? I can raise hand. 
but I think only you have the opportunity to okay. right click me and give me go. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, oh my goodness, you guys, I've never done this before uh, four or five months ago. So uh, here, this you. is part, part of the courage and part of being brave and doing something new. It's pretty exciting. So um, it's all good. Okay, so breakout rooms are set up. Or not. Okay. And and then there's the chat. Oh my goodness, there's just no way that I can keep track of everything. It will be a room for education today or next week? Because let's, I haven't. Uh, let's leave it for next week. Sorry okay. about that, Elias. Um, no, no worries, because just I saw the, the slides, <laughs> but it, it suits me to be next week. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, good. So there's one less room. This is good because we don't want to divide. We want to collaborate. Yeah, and Melanie, I'll just express too. People can reach out to me if they have specific questions or want to chat. I can be about. I'd hate to take away from all the other things going on here. Why don't you join my my room and okay. we we can work on? Um, yeah, I need some help figuring out this collaborative process. Great. Um, so I'll be over there if anyone has a specific question for okay, me. Okay. So you see an empty room, use it if you want, or just, um, you know, come in. Now, do we have everybody's rooms ready to go? Okay. So Is feel free to. Miss anyone? Which, which room I go then? Uh, you can go to climate change proposal. Okay. So everybody who's up for mini proposal workshop, go to the climate change. Perfect. And oh, then we... I, want, I wanted to name it mini, mini proposal, but yeah, I know uh, that's the good. So... didn't fit in anymore. <laughs> okay, we got it. And I'll hang out here for a little bit until um, until everybody's uh, moved over, or if anybody else needs help moving. And actually, I just need a five minute break, and I'll be right back. Good, if anyone needs help, let me know. Hello, how are you? Up oh, left, okay, good. Hi. Hi. And you, man? I can't, uh... sorry, I can't hear. So, I don't want to move.